You're listening to the Sunnybrook Unscripted Podcast, where we talk real life, answer questions, and take a deeper, practical look at the topics we talk about on a Sunday morning. To learn more about Sunnybrook Church, including our Sunday gathering times and opportunities throughout the week, visit us online at sunnybrookchurch.org. Today we are talking with BJ Van Kelsbeek. Well, welcome to the Sunnybrook Unscripted Podcast. I am Lydia Miller here with our special guest, BJ Van Callsbeek. BJ, thanks for being here. Yes. Uh, we are in a specific series where we have been inviting in different experts on staff to talk about kind of their area, what they work in, what they do on a regular basis in their ministry. We took a look with Beth at kids ministry, with Eric at student ministry, and BJ is here to chat with us a little bit about the area that he has the opportunity to work with. But if you are someone where you don't have the pleasure of knowing BJ and all of his antics, which is my favorite part about who you are, uh, I just want to have him give just a little bit of an introduction of who you are and what you do here at Sunnybrook. Yeah, I'll start with, I think this is a mistake if it's the expert, right. so I'm not sure if I should be here. Um, so, so my name is BJ and um, married to Manda, and we have four children, ages 17 down to nine. And I've been here at Sunnybrook on staff for about nine years now and get to work in all sorts of areas. We call it congregational life, which is one of those like, well, what is that? Um, a lot of care ministry kinds of uh, areas. Uh, pastoral care would be the large focus, support group kind of ministries uh, get to be involved then related to that funeral ministry. Um, our correctional ministry is something that uh, I get to be a part of in, in a variety of ways. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about mm -hmm what I get to do. Awesome. Involved with. Yes. Now there's an area of your ministry that you are so incredibly good at. That is probably an area that causes most of us a lot of anxiety, and that is walking alongside people who are suffering from a loss. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Then also next week, how we walk alongside people, because this is something, a world that you step into quite a bit. People who have lost a loved one, lost someone that is near and dear to them. And so today we wanna to give you just a little bit of wisdom into where do you turn? Where do you go? What do you do when you've lost a loved one and you feel like you're not really sure where to turn? So kind of to start, would you say um, when you are walking alongside someone who's dealt with loss, the loss of a loved one specifically, what are some typical places that you immediately send them for comfort, assurance of their faith, yeah. what have you? Yeah. And, and let me start even by saying I personally haven't experienced much close death. Um, thankfully, I'm grateful for that, but I recognize that's a difference. And, and I don't know what I don't know. And so um, I'm speaking from, from learning from others in the journey and, um, and, and leaning on them of what's been helpful. But um, I, I think that is an important distinction that I just wanna make. Um, but yeah, the scripture question is a good one. Um, here was, here's one that I have found myself turning to a lot and just did recently here this last week with a death and a funeral. Um, I actually got to experience it from family, lived out, and then it, it comes to my mind. And that is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. And Paul writes about how, uh, speaking about those who've died, um, saying, we don't want you to grieve like those with no hope, mm. the rest of humankind who has no hope. And he goes on uh, to speak about that, but I just, I stay right there and uh, acknowledge that Paul is not saying we're not gonna grieve. Mm. Uh, he's not diminishing our, our loss, our pain. We do grieve, we're human. But when we are uh, of faith, when we have our faith in Christ, when our loved one, when we know has their faith in Christ, uh, we grieve with hope. And that changes immensely the experience. Again, I experienced it last week with family. Uh, they could speak with certainty of the hope that they had, knowing where she is, knowing that she's in God's presence. Um, that, that's huge. When I know that faith is present, that is something that I can speak to not minimizing their loss, their pain, but recognizing it's of a different nature because of the hope mm -hmm. they have. Mm -hmm. And what just a gift that hope is for 
any loved one. I've, we always yeah. have said, I, we said this recently with my, uh, the loss of my grandma of, <laughs> she's the best one in this situation. She yes. is right at the feet of Jesus and right where she needs to be. We're the ones um, left behind that are struggling. But I would also say there's a flip side to this, and I'm sure you've walked through this as well, that I've talked with people about, what if, what if we're not sure if we have that hope? I mean, we, yeah. can, we can say that we have that hope for people who are believers, but what if you lose someone and you find yourself, gosh, I, I just don't, I don't know if I have that hope for yeah. them. Great question. It's one that I wrestle with uh, quite frequently, uh, oftentimes walking with people where I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know where they are at faith-wise. Um, maybe their loved ones aren't sure of where they were at faith-wise. Um, and, and a couple things go through my mind. Um, and, and one is, is just the acknowledgement. Thankfully, uh, we are not the judge. Mm-hmm. Uh, God is the judge. God is righteous, just, and merciful. Uh, God knows, and I can trust him. Uh, And so I I can back off my need to, like, determine, even though I long to know, when there is absence of knowing, I can trust God. Mm -hmm. I can trust God all the time, even with knowing. Um, Another thought is... um, I don't have a clue. I, I might have some awareness or doubt of where people are at, but really, I don't have a clue where people are at. And I remember visiting somebody in the hospital in Michigan and family had asked me to, to connect with their dying loved one before they had died. And, and it was a, a sense of urgency of almost like, would you go save them? <laughs> well, first of all, I can't save anybody. Uh, secondly, I felt tremendous pressure yeah. <laughs> going into that room. And I don't remember what was shared between us, but here's my takeaway. I remember coming out of that room thinking, you know what? I think this guy's probably got a stronger faith and closer relationship with God than I do. And it looks differently than my faith, probably your faith, uh, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And it, it helped me recognize that there's just an immense amount that I don't know about someone's life and their relationship with God, what's between them and God and their heart, mm-hmm. recognizing again the thief on the cross, mm-hmm. how, what things can happen in, in a moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I take comfort by that, yeah. knowing that I'm going to trust God with, <laughs> with what I know and what I don't know. Yep, yep I love yeah. that. I think one of my favorite things about Sunnybrook, and this has really been years in the making and just incredible volunteers, is just the support that we have for people who are walking through loss, people that have lost a spouse to a child. We have really specific support groups. Will you walk us through what some of those are and what they kind of look like if someone's interested in joining one of those groups? Yep. Yeah, so grateful to have all these options, and these are coming out of people walking through it themselves who are wanting to come alongside others. And that's a scriptural thing, sharing the same comfort they themselves have received. Uh, grief share is sort of our, our standard, I would say kind of foundational grief support ministry. Uh, it's a 13 week support group uh, for anyone who's experienced the death of a loved one, regardless of age, regardless of how, what time frame, regardless of relationship. Um, and we offer grief share three times a year regularly here. Um, we now, uh, we've done, a, we've done an offsite, uh, grief share group in Lamar's once where we've done now, uh, we're doing a second one in rural Cherokee. Um, and, and so grief share has been very helpful for many. Grief share has some standalone, um, sessions called loss of spouse and surviving the holidays. We'll offer those at different times of the year. Um, we also have had a, a, a group for teens going through grief as well. And we've utilized adult grief share material, uh, but specific for teens that we'll occasionally offer uh, when there's interest. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then a couple of specific groups that have come up more recently have been a Widows Walking Together group, uh, specifically women who have experienced the death of their husbands, Mm -hmm. acknowledging where they're at in life. This is what's happened. And there's a lot that I share with you and you with me, and they they connect. Uh, Not that the whole focus is their loss, Mm -hmm. but that's a commonality uh, that that brings them together. Uh, That group meets every other week, Mm -hmm. ongoing. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then we've got a ministry called Bereaved Mothers Group. Again, women who have walked through the incredible pain of a death of a child 
and trying to come alongside others, acknowledging there are others who are in the same boat. And it's not a pain that they want to share, uh, but it's where they are and they are ministering out of that. And that group meets once a month ongoing, regular. And then something a little unique from that, that's not a group, but is revive biblical counseling. And that's one-on-one -on -one support on, on any area, but it could include grief, uh, connecting with a counselor here uh, through Sunnybrook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we know that you know those groups are led by just incredible volunteers, people who have been uh, trained and have really wanted to kind of make this their ministry and their opportunity to do what you said, what Scripture calls us to, to yeah. walk alongside people and give the comfort that they themselves have received. Um, if you're interested in any of those, those are all on our website. You can read a little bit more about them, find out some information, see what would maybe be a good fit for you if this is a season that you are currently in. You are also welcome to reach out to the church office. BJ, I'm sure, would be happy to take a call from you and just share with you more about what those are. Well, we are going to be back together next week. We're going to chat a little bit more about how you can walk along some, alongside someone in your life who has experienced loss themselves. So make sure you tune in and join us. If you are encouraged by today's talk, be sure to rate us and hit subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you stream your podcasts. To experience other talks, videos, and live gatherings, visit us online at sunnybrookchurch.org or download the Sunnybrook Church app. And again, thanks for listening to the Sunnybrook Community Church Podcast.